Hi, this is a video on frequency polygons. So here is an example of a frequency polygon. You'll notice that there are frequencies up the vertical column and on the horizontal you have test scores, this is what it says. But the test scores are actually the midpoints of a class. So 35 is actually from 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and they have the midpoint selected. 50 to 60, 55. Frequency polygons are a graphical device for understanding the shapes of distributions. They um, serve the same purpose as a histogram, and uh, but are especially helpful for comparing uh, sets of data. So a good choice for a frequency polygon would be a cumulative frequency distribution. This is a frequency distribution. Um, you'll notice that it starts at zero on the vertical here and ends at zero on the vertical. Okay, so normally they add a class where it stops and starts at zero. Otherwise, the data actually started here and went up this way. It actually started at 40 and went up, but they added another class just so it looks anchored to the graph and you see a complete um, curve. Here's an example in my math lab. I have it as view example so I can explain. This is a summary of data. It says um, the number of people from a town, age 25 to 64, is subscribed to a certain print magazine construct a frequency polygon. Does the graph suggest the distribution is skewed? If so, how? So from 25 to 64. And these are the frequencies of people that fit in each of these classes. Now we'll notice that the class the width is 10, right? It goes up by 25 to 35 is 10. So we need to find the midpoints because in this graph for this test score, these were the midpoints. Okay? So in order to find the midpoints, we need to add 25 and 34 and divide by 2. Add 35 and 44 and divide by 2. So we'll do that. And you can see that they're in this column here. 25 plus 34 equals divide by 2. Make sure you set an equal sign here and then divide by 2 or put parentheses around your 25 plus 34. 29.5. Now since the class width was 10, the width between these values will be 10. So you don't have to go through and keep doing it for each of these. Since the class width, width, width was 10, I just go up by 10s. 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5. So now we have the midpoints of each of these classes. I'm going to open the data in StatCrunch. And so this is the original classes, right? I'm actually going to insert a row here. So edit, row, insert number one row in before row one. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to add my, my cla class here for my midpoints. So again here the midpoint was 29.5, 39.5, 49.5, 59.5. Now this is how you can do it um, digitally in, in StatCrunch, but you could also just do this by hand and kind of sketch it out. Now we need a anchor for our frequency polygon. So we put the two zeros in there and then we need the numbers that are at the beginning and end. Now it's pretty easy to figure out. The width was 10, 10, 10, so we just go down by 10. And then we just go up by 10. And then these uh, two here are our anchors to the graph and these are our frequencies. Now we can just plot these on a graph if you want to draw it by hand, but also we could just do it here in StatCrunch. Go to Chart, Columns, we're going to, um, we want to plot the people, which were the frequency, okay? We don't want to do the age. The age are the X values. We want to do the Y values or the frequency, the people. We want, uh, let's put the rows, the row as the age. So this is the age, the middle of the age. And we have the order by the worksheet, just like it is. We want to change the plot to connected points with connected lines. So, because a frequency polygon has points with connected lines. Then click Compute. You'll notice that it starts at 0 at our 19.5, 29.5, and if you hover over it, you should be able to see the value. I guess I clicked it, so. 39.5, 134, etc. So this is a frequency polygon and you can kind of tell now 
the answer to the question it was asking, right? Does the graph suggest that the distribution is skewed? If so, how? Well, it looks a little skewed, doesn't it? Let's go down here. Matches the data there. 19.5, 69.5 goes up. Determine if it's skewed. A distribution of data is skewed if it is not symmetric and extends to more than one side than to the other. Data skewed to the right, also called positively skewed, have a longer tail to the right. So we don't have a longer tail to the right. Data skewed to the left, also called negatively skewed, has a longer tail to the left. Examine the frequency of the polygon carefully. Notice that the tail appears longer on the left than the right. So this would be skewed to the left. Okay, so that's how you create a frequency polygon, finding the midpoints and then adding the two rows above and below your data to anchor it to zero and then just plot it with points at the frequencies and connect the lines. So easily done by hand, but it's also easily done in StatCrunch. If you have data, let's say you were just given pure data and you had to bin the data yourself, that's another problem for another video. All right, any questions, let me know.